the Sephora VIB sale is upon us and along with that come all the YouTube videos and the influencers with their recommendations, wish lists, what to buy, what not to buy. Doesn't it feel like we just survived the Nordstrom anniversary scam? But in case your wallet has not yet recovered from the Nordstrom anniversary sale, I'm here to go against the grain of all the other videos recommending you to buy products and spend money and tell you to clamp your wallet shut. Now, a recent survey reported that over 70% of Americans feel stressed about money each month. And I can only imagine that this gets worse during this time of year when the holidays are around the corner. With this Sephora VIB sale only compounding all this financial pressure, I wanna go over some ways to alleviate that stress. But first, let's examine the Sephora VIB sale a little further. The first thing you see when you go to the Sephora website is their announcement that their holiday savings event is coming. What an interesting term, savings event. I guess savings is a new way of saying spending. But scrolling further down, we see that the sale is from November 5th to November 15th. First access from November 5th to November 8th is the Rouge level, where you get 20% off. Then from 11.9 to 11.15, the VIB level, which is 15% off. And then finally is from November 11th to the November 15th is the Insider level, which gets you 10% off. It has a section where it says, what does it take to become a beauty insider? So we see to be an insider, it's free. You just have to sign up and be a member. Okay, great, that gets us 10% off. So to be a VIB member, you have to spend $350 a year. Wow, to get 15% off, you have to be spending $350 a year at Sephora. And then to be a Rouge Level member, you have to spend $1,000 a year at Sephora to save just 20%. Now to put those percentages in perspective, I'm going to pull up a random product on the Sephora website. As an example, we'll use the Natasha Denona Bronze Eyeshadow Palette. This is normally $65. $65 for an eyeshadow palette. Now, if you're just a basic member, an insider, you'll get 10% off of this palette, which is $6.50. If you're a VIB level member and you spent $350 at Sephora this year, you'll get $9 off. Now, if you're a Rouge level member, this palette will be $13 off. So the cheapest you're gonna get a $65 Natasha Denona palette is $52. So you're still spending $52 on an eyeshadow palette. Now I understand that Natasha Denona is a luxury brand and Sephora sells luxury items. However, I don't want anyone that's feeling financial pressure out there to add to it by buying a $65 palette and you're thinking, oh, 20% off, what a great deal. That is only $13 off. You're still spending over $50 on an eyeshadow palette. Now it's really easy to get caught up in keeping up with the Joneses, especially when you watch the YouTube videos in the beauty community. Everyone is talking about the Sephora VIB sale and it's really easy to feel like you really need these items that these influencers are recommending. I totally understand, I'm a makeup lover myself. However, if you're going to bed at night and how you're going to pay your bills is keeping you up, maybe charging a $50 palette isn't the best idea. A survey conducted in 2021 showed that 54% of adults carry credit card balances from month to month. And over 50% of those people have been in credit card debt for at least a year. So they're carrying balances month to month and they've been doing it long term. And knowing how much credit card interest is, how much it costs you, that is concerning. Now the average debt a person carries on their credit card is $5,300. That's a lot of balance to be carrying long term with credit card interest rates being so high. Now I bring some of these figures up just to put it in perspective that credit card debt and financial stress is a common thing. It's not something that should be taboo and we shouldn't talk about and it's not something to feel ashamed about. But knowing that most of us are carrying this large amount of debt, I think we should feel comfortable in just saying no to adding things to our credit card when we don't need them. Again, going back to all these videos we're seeing regarding this sale, influencing us, 
pressuring us to buy and making us feel like we need some of these luxury items. But it's important to understand that these YouTubers have an incentive to recommend us to buy these things. If we click on their links, they do get small commissions for us buying through their links. And if thousands of people watch their videos and hundreds or thousands of people use their links to buy the products they recommend, their commission will add up. So they do have a pretty good incentive to recommend us to buy these things. It's not totally out of the goodness of their heart. Now, I understand loving the YouTubers you follow and feeling a connection with them. I'm totally for supporting YouTubers. And if that is important to you to support your favorite YouTubers, there are a couple things you can do without having to spend your own money. You can watch their videos until the end. That really helps their video retention and it helps them in the search results. And also letting the ads that are displayed in their videos play till the end. Then they get the ad revenue from it. So you're helping to support your YouTuber and at the same time, you don't have to spend any money. You just give a little bit of your time. And for most of us normal people out there, this event at Sephora isn't even that big of a discount. We only get 10% off. That's barely anything on these high-end, high-priced items. Now, in order to get 15 and 20% off, which is still a small amount, you have to spend $350 or $1,000 a year at Sephora. Now, I don't know about you, but there is no way, even at the drugstore, that I spend $350 or $1,000 in makeup, beauty, hair care, etc. If I tally up everything I spend on my hair, on makeup, and beauty products, it's definitely well under $350 a year. So in order to qualify for the slightly higher increments, you have to spend so much more money. Everyone's personal situation is different, and I encourage you to evaluate your situation and see if you, know, you have money to play with, you have some extra money, and you have it in your budget to shop the sale and enjoy the savings. So some situations that it may be a bad idea to shop the sale. One of them would be if you're already feeling a lot of financial pressure and your credit card debt is adding up. Another situation it may be a bad idea to shop the sale is if you have other financial goals you're not meeting. So this is beyond credit card debt. Let's say your credit card debt is paid off, you're not worried about debt, but let's say you're not really planning for your retirement or you have a car you should be paying off, or maybe you could put a little extra each month towards your mortgage. Maybe pay off that mortgage a little sooner. There's plenty of financial goals that you could be working towards, not just paying off your credit card. Another situation it might be a bad idea to shop the sale is if you already have the products and you just want a new shiny toy. Let's say you already have seven blushes. Do you really need that brand new blush just because it's on sale and just because someone recommended it to you? I know retail therapy is a thing and buying a new item gives us that temporary feeling of euphoria, but that does fade. And then you're left with all these products, all these duplicates that you're not using and you didn't need. Instead, it's a great idea to curate a makeup collection or a beauty collection that you use and will use up so you don't have multiples on multiples. But if you are feeling a tinge of keeping up with the Joneses, I have a little tip for you. Shop your own stash. Fall in love with your, the makeup products you already have again. Look through your collection and use items you haven't used in a while and challenge yourself to create new looks with them. Maybe bring out products you haven't used in a while and create a little basket and use those for a while and put the other ones away out of sight, out of mind. That way when you rotate them in and out, you get excited about your products all over again. Dupe the looks. If you see an influencer creating a look using products that are in the Sephora VIB sale, try to create the same look with the products you already have. Challenge yourself that way. So there might be some situations where it is a good idea to shop the sale. Maybe you've used up a high-end product that is your holy grail and the timing of the sale just works out with you repurchasing that product. That's great. You were going to repurchase it anyway, you might as well get a little bit of a discount on it. Let's say you have to buy presents for people in your life this holiday season, and those presents just happen to be makeup items that are in the Sephora VIB sale. Great, you might as well shop early, get ahead of the Christmas season, and buy those items at a slight discount. Personally, I won't be participating in the Sephora VIB sale. I'm at a point in my life where I'm only shopping at the drugstore for makeup. 
I have other priorities financially that I'd rather put my money toward. Maybe sometime in the future when all those goals are met, I can start buying bougie makeup and treating myself. But right now, that's not my focus. But let me know in the comments, was this video helpful? What are your thoughts on these kind of sales? What are your thoughts on the YouTube videos flying around? Will you be getting anything from the sale? I hope you found this helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, off I go. Very clever, off you go.